And let's begin by sharing the pranava together. Inhale, bringing hands to heart center. And take a breath in. Oh. And the Gayatri Mantra together. Take a breath in. Om Bhava Swaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Pargo Devasya Dimahi Diyo Yona Prachodayat Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Exhale, release the hands, and let's just stay here. We'll do a little uh, seated warm-up. So sitting up nice and straight, hands on your sides, palms up, roll the shoulders back. Inhale the arms up, and exhale down. So ground through the seat bones. As you inhale up, stretching through the fingertips, but with relaxed shoulders. Exhale down. This time we'll lift the chin up as we lift the arms. Inhale, look up. Keep the spine as straight as, straight as you can. Exhale down. Let the chin come to the chest. Again, inhale up. Exhale down. So this is excellent for really isolating movements. Inhale, come up. Exhale down. Side bend, right hand stays where it is. Open up the left palm. Inhale, the arm up. Stretch up, drop the shoulders. Relax the hips, but lengthen the spine. And now on your next exhale, go ahead and to the right. Again, it's always a good thing to look through your left armpit because that keeps your body facing forward. You have a tendency to round the shoulder sometimes. Ground through that left hip as you stretch through the fingertips. It doesn't matter if you come down to your hand or to your elbow, as long as you feel the stretch in the opening. Four, soft breath and nice, easy belly. Three, two, one, inhale, come to center, lengthen the spine, and then exhale, release. Left arm stays down, open up the right palm, lengthen the spine, inhale, arm up. Drop the shoulder, ground through the hips, lengthen the spine. Take a breath in, and then when you're ready, find that nice side bend. Really feel the stretch with the right side. Sometimes we have a tendency to want to come further down to our elbow, which is fine, but don't lose the feeling of the stretch. Four, think about your shoulder blades at the bottom of the shoulder points. Let them gently draw down towards the spine. Two, one, inhale, come back up, lengthen, and exhale, release. Hands are on our knees. This is uh, like the cow and cat. As I inhale, I look up, open the chest, and as I exhale, I become concave. All right, but we're always sitting on our seat bones. Let's begin. Inhale, look up, shine the heart. Exhale, become concave, roll the shoulders in. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Move the neck in line with the spine. Inhale, up. And exhale, down. One more time. Inhale, up. And exhale down. Coming back to our neutral seated, seated position, let's do a spinal twist, left hand to right knee. Inhale the right arm up, square off in the front, drop the shoulder. 
Take a breath in. As you exhale, you find the twist. Now stay here in this twist and bring both shoulders back. When you exhale again, gently bring the right hand down behind your hip. Lengthen the spine, adjust the shoulders as needed, and then lift the hands off the mat and off your knee. Try to find the balance of keeping a long spine and feeling the twist. Both hips are still on the ground, seat bones are on the ground. Look through the right corner of your eye. Now, even as you're twisting, you can have a soft belly. Four. Three. Two. One. Coming out of the pose, bring the hands back down. Right hand behind you, inhale it up. As you exhale, come back to center and release. Opposite side, take the right hand to the left knee. Inhale the left arm up, drop the shoulder and square off first. Take a breath in. As you exhale, you find the twist. Now when I say find the twist, you're finding the twist, you're lengthening the, lengthening the spine, dropping the shoulders, and relaxing your knees and hips. On your next exhale, go ahead, bring the left arm behind your hip. Again, find the twist. Release the hands from the mat and the knee. Shoulders are in one line. Soft belly. Hold. Four. Three. Two. And one. Coming out of the pose, bring the hands back down. Left arm, inhale it up behind you. Exhale, return to center and release. Let's come into child's pose. Knees are wide apart, as wide as your mat. If you can, extend the arms, rest the forehead on the mat. You can always put a block or a cushion underneath your head. We're just opening up the hips, opening up the shoulder now. In this pose, let's really bring our intention to our breath, bringing the focus there. Having a perfect inhale, a perfect exhale. For eight, seven, six, five, Four, three, two, and one. Let's roll up into a nice deep squat. So you lift your head off, come up on your hands, bring the toes underneath you, and now you just push back into a low squat. Don't worry if because of your knees or hips you're actually in more of a chair pose, that's fine. You can feel the opening through the hips, through the ankles. My arms are extended, I'm tucking the head. What I'm trying to do here is warm up my toes and my ankles. Coming into a forward fold. As you exhale, release the hands down. Hips come up. You can keep your knees bent. We're just warming up. Tuck the head. But let's roll those shoulders behind us. They're not hanging out by our ears. Very soft. Back is rounded. Knees are bent. From here, we can engage the arch. Really start feeling that little bit of alignment through the knees and the hips as needed. So it's an active pose. Let's hold. 
eight, seven, six, five. Don't let those shoulders go. Don't let your shoulders come to your ears. Three, two, one. Reverse swan dive, really focusing on the integrity of your lower body. So first bend the knees a little bit more. Lift the head, lengthen the back. Inhale, extend the arms out to the side. Now coming up from your hips in a nice straight line. Inhale, come up. At the top, hands reach up high, drop the shoulders, and exhale, release the hands. So if you're not at the top of your mat, go ahead. Come to the top of your mat. Come into Tadasana. We're going to do a few balance poses. So I have too many mats, so I'm just getting rid of one. So make adjustments as you may need. We're in Tadasana. Toes, heels, knees, pelvis, elongate through the spine. Let the shoulders drop down. Hands are active by our sides. Chin is neutral. Let's go ahead and lift all our toes off the mat and then gently put them down and feel that balance. Opening up the hands, inhale the arms up. Look at your hands. Exhale, release the hands down, release the chin to the mat. I mean to the chest, not to the mat. Again, inhale, look up. And exhale down. One more time. Inhale, look up. At the top, stay here. Drop the shoulders, lengthen the spine. Coming into chair pose, but we're going to go into chair looking up at our hands. Feel the integrity of your toes, knees, and hips. Take a breath in. Exhale, sit. When you get as far as you can, keep the hands where they are. The gaze is neutral in front of you. Drop the shoulders. Now, if you can, pelvic tilt a little bit more. Good. Feel equal weight to the toes and the heels. Your knees can be a little bit in front of your ankles as long as you don't have any knee issues. If you have arthritis in the knees and you really need to keep the alignment, then come back a little bit, okay? Hold. Eight. Seven. If you're feeling tension in the neck and the upper shoulder, remember, think about your shoulder blades. Draw them together and down to take the tension out of the top shoulder. Five, four, three, two, one. Coming out, inhale, stand up. Exhale, release the hands down to your sides. Forward fold, you can choose to have your arms extended in front of you or out to the side like a swan dive, but everyone will have knees bent. Open up the hands. Inhale the arms up. As you go down, choose how you want to come down. Bent knees straight back, whether it's a swan dive or arms extended. Reach for the ground. Draw the hands back, toes and fingers in line. Tuck the head. Knees are bent. Reversing, lift the head, lengthen the spine. Extend the arms. Inhale, come up. And exhale, release. We're going to do this two more times. The focus here is on smooth breath without any hitches in your breath. So on your rhythm of inhaling and exhaling, go ahead and do it two more times. All right? Go ahead on your own. You can stay in your forward fold for one or two breaths and then coordinate it and come back up.
And then let's all meet in Tadasana. Don't rush. Take your time. We'll all meet here. Every time you're in Tadasana, it's another opportunity to refine this position. Stepping back into warrior one, working through our balance first. As I inhale my arms up, I shift the weight right and bring the left knee to float in front of the left hip. Let's begin. Inhale up. Drop that left hip as needed so that it's squared off to the right. Integrity of the right leg, drop the shoulders. Head is in neutral position. Fix your gaze on something in front of you for balance. That's called the drishti. Inhale, step back with the left foot. First your toe, then your heel. Straighten both legs. Square the hips. Warrior one. Take a breath in. Exhale to warrior one. Hold here. Drop the shoulders. If you like, you can have a little bit of a back bend. That's kind of cool sometimes. So you're looking up at the ceiling with the back bend, but I'm not crunching through my lumbar. I'm always thinking about extending first, lengthening the spine, and then going back. Four, three, two, one. Inhale, come back to center. Stepping forward, floating that left knee in front of the left hip. Let's go slow in steps, okay? As I get started, as I inhale, I come up on the left toe, which brings my weight forward. As I keep coming forward, the toe lifts, I feel balance, and I bring the left knee up. Let's stay here. Four, three, two, one. Keep your eye on your drishti, your focal point, as we step back to warrior one. Take a breath in. Exhale, step back, square off, straighten up. Warrior one, take a breath in, and exhale, bend that front knee. Inhale, lengthen the spine, and if you'd like, back bend. Four, three, two, one. Inhale, come back to center. Feel the balance here. Stepping into Tadasana, floating the left knee in front. Inhale, start shifting the weight. And then just continue on. Left knee comes up. Hold. Drop your shoulders. Four. Three. Two. One. Exhale, release back down to Tadasana. Equal weight on both feet. Feel this nice balance. Opposite side, inhale, lift the hands up, shift the weight, and the right knee comes up. Square off, drop shoulders, hold, four, three, two, one. Stepping back, inhale, step back, toe, heel, both legs straight, square off. Warrior one, take your breath in, exhale, warrior one. So as we practice this, you see that you don't always have to have such a wide, deep warrior one where your bent knee and bent thigh are parallel to the ground. It doesn't have to be that way. It just looks good in magazines. But even just that little bit of a bend is very good for your joints and for your mus muscular system. All right, let's do a back bend. As you inhale, lengthen. Exhale, find the back bend. Hold four, three, two, one. Inhale, come back to center. Feel the balance. Coming back to the dasana, floating the right knee. As I inhale, I shift the weight, come up onto the toes, and then just float that right knee in front. Square off, hold. Four, three, two, one. Repeating. Inhale, step back. Exhale, square off, straighten the legs. Take a breath in and then exhale to warrior one. 
Feel the integrity here. So when integrity is lifting the arch, slight external rotation to engage those inner thighs so that you have stability when you do the back bend and switch your gaze from forward to up towards the ceiling. All right. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, find your back bend. If you like. Four. Three. Okay, you need to relax the belly so you can get big breaths here. Relax through the chest. Two. And one. Inhale, let's come back to center. Stepping forward, floating the right knee. Inhale, shift the weight. Release the right toe and come back up. Hold. Four. Three. Two. One. Exhale, release. Come back to Tadasana. Hands are by your sides. Repeating, and then we'll add an, another element to it. So this time we shift to the right. Inhale, shift weight right. Left knee comes up. Square off. Inhale, step back. Toe, heel, square off. Warrior one, take a breath in. Exhale, warrior one. Opening up to warrior two. Now remember, your gaze doesn't move. You're simply opening up through that back hip and you may even have to move the back foot and open it up a little bit. So take a breath in. As you exhale, open up into warrior two. Do your best not to let your knees come forward down towards the mat. Transition to warrior one. Inhale, both arms up. And now bring the hip forward towards the short side of the mat. Beautiful. Let's do it again. Warrior two, take a breath in. Exhale, open up, warrior two. Nice and smooth. Transition, warrior one. Inhale, arms up. Exhale to warrior one. Back bend here, take a breath in, lengthen. Exhale, back bend. Four, three, two, one. Inhale, come back to center. Transition to Tadasana, floating that left knee. Inhale, shift your weight forward. Float that left knee up. Hold. Four. Three. Two. One. Tadasana, take a breath in. Exhale, release down to Tadasana. Take two breaths here. Feel balance on both feet. Opposite side. Inhale, shift weight left. Right knee comes up. Stepping back. Inhale, step back. Toe, heel, square off. Warrior one, take a breath in. Exhale, warrior one. Keep your gaze forward as we open up into warrior two. Take a breath in and then exhale. Warrior two, sorry I misspoke. So we're in warrior two. Think about your knees. Think about engaging through the inner thighs. Transition warrior one, inhale arms up. And now warrior one. Shoulders really don't move that much in terms of shoulder blades. They're still down along the spine. You're simply opening up through the right hip and extending the arms to the side. Let's do it one more time. Take a breath in. Exhale, warrior two. Transition, warrior one. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, warrior one. Back bend. Integrity of the lower body. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, find the back bend. Four. Keep stretching up so you don't crunch through the lumbar. Three, two, one. Inhale, come back to center. Okay, quiet your thoughts. Calm the breath as we come into our balance move. Inhale, shift weight. 
Bring that right knee up to float in front of the right hip. Drop the shoulders. Hold four, three, two, one. Tadasana, exhale, release Tadasana on both legs. Adding another element, stay here, feel balanced first. Doesn't mean relax, you still have to have awareness of your lifted arch, slight external rotation of knees and hips, nice long spine, chin in neutral. Okay, let's begin, we shift to the right. Inhale, shift weight right, lift the left knee up. Stepping back, inhale, step back, toe, heel, square off. Warrior one, take a breath in, exhale. Warrior one. Transition warrior two. Take a breath in. Exhale, open up. I'm sorry, warrior two. Warrior one again. Inhale, arms up. Warrior one. Back bend. Take a breath in. And exhale into your back bend. Four. Three. Two, one, inhale, come back to center. Here's the new element. We're going to fly into warrior three, but it's gonna be in stages. So if you can just turn your head so you can watch the computer or the screen, okay? As I inhale, I shift the weight to the right leg, just like we've done. As I keep coming forward, my left toes are going to come off the mat. I let my hands come down beside my body, and I'm only going to lift up a little bit. This is all, okay? This is the beginning. And then as I exhale, back into warrior one, arms float up. Watch again. As I inhale, I shift weight. As I take that exhale, arms down by my side, Leg comes up behind me. It doesn't have to come up all the way, halfway. Take a breath in here and then exhale. Come back to warrior one. All righty, so let's all meet in warrior one. Let's begin. Inhale, shift weight. Feel the balance on the right. Exhale, arms down. Bring that leg behind you just a little bit. Take a breath in. Exhale, release down back to warrior one. Good, again, inhale, shift weight. Exhale, lift toes up, hands come down by our sides. Take a breath in, and then exhale, gently come back down to warrior one. All meeting here in warrior one, coming to Tadasana, floating the left knee. Inhale, shift weight, and bring that left knee in front. Hold, four, three, Two, one, Tadasana, exhale, release down, in Tadasana. Opposite side, shifting our weight to the left. Inhale, shift the weight left, right knee's floating in front of the right hip. Inhale, step back, toe, heel, square off. Warrior one, take a breath. Exhale, warrior one. Warrior two, take a breath. Exhale, open up into warrior one. Ah, darn it, warrior two. Transition to warrior one. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, back into warrior one. Gaze is still in front. Warrior two, take a breath. Exhale, open up. Warrior one, inhale, arms up. And exhale, you're back into warrior one. Back bend, take a breath in, lengthen. Exhale, find that back bend. Four, three, two, one. Inhale, come back to center. Getting ready to fly halfway into our warrior three. As you inhale, go ahead, shift the weight to the left leg. And then exhale, both arms come down. Lift that right leg up halfway. 
and then exhale, release down, arms up, warrior one. Let's do it again. Inhale, shift weight. Right toe comes up. Exhale, arm down, leg halfway up. Exhale again, release down, warrior one. Last time. Inhale, shift weight. Exhale, hands down. Lift the leg up halfway. And then exhale again, come back to warrior one. Coming into Tadasana, right knee floating. Inhale, shift weight. And then bring that right knee up. Square off. Hold four. Three. Two. One. Exhale, release down to Tadasana. Hold here in Tadasana. Close the eyes. And release. Open the eyes. Go ahead. Get... Get where you can look at the screen. Garuda Asana, Eagle Pose. Now in Eagle Pose, remember we have our arms crisscrossed like that. And I wanna show you what you can do with your legs. When we shift our weight to the right and bring the left knee up, the more you can bend that right knee, the easier it is to cross that left thigh in front. So the first position, is with the right knee bent and simply cross the ankle and toes over and touch the left toe on the outside of the foot. If that feels good and your hips are square, they're squared off, they're not like this, okay? Then you may wanna lift the toes off. If that feels good, you may want to bring your left foot to the side of your right thigh, but your hips are still squared. If that feels good, you get your toes behind your uh, right leg. But look at what happened to me. My hips are a little bit at an angle now. They're not squared forward. All right? So even though I can do this, what am I doing? I'm actually putting too much torque on my knee because my hip isn't opening up enough, but my knee has some wiggle room. But over time, that's going to cause damage. So it's most important, no matter what you choose, this, 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 or all the way, that your hips are squared off, okay? So let's just work on the bottom part first. Stand in Tadasana, feet slightly apart. Find something in front of you, a dristi, focal point that is not moving, like wavy curtains or trees that are moving is not good. Hands can be on hips. Take a breath in. If you exhale, bend both knees first. Okay, in this knee position with bent knees, think about lifting the arch, slight external rotation of both legs. We're gonna shift our weight to the left leg. As I inhale, I shift the weight to the left leg, bringing the right knee up, but left leg is bent, left knee is bent, okay? Cross over and let your right toes touch the mat next to your foot. Square off. If that feels good, lift them up. If that feels good, see if you can bring your foot either next to your shin or behind your shin. Good. Lengthen the spine. There's a tendency to arch the back. Little pelvic tilt. Hold four, three, two, one. To come out. Bring that right knee floated in front of your right hip. And now exhale, release down. Toe, heel, straighten both legs. All right, let's do the other side. Take a breath in. Exhale, bend both knees first. Integrity, lift the arch. Feel that external rotation to really ground yourself. As I inhale again, I'm going to shift to the right to free up the left toe. Cross over. You can stay right here or you can lift the toes up. Perhaps you can bring your foot on the outside of your shin or behind your calf as long as you're squared off. 
hold. Whoops, four, three, two, one. To come out, inhale, bring that left knee back in front of the left hip. Exhale, slowly come down, left toe, left heel, both legs. Good. Shake it out a little bit. We're going to do it one more time. And this time, what I'd like you to do, and it doesn't matter if you fall out of it or not. This is just experiencing and playing and exploring. See what happens if you bend your knees even a little bit more. See if that makes it more stable for you. Maybe it won't, so then you'll know that you don't want to bend so much. But let's experiment. All right. Tadasana. Take a breath in. Exhale, bend those knees. Shifting the weight to the right. Inhale, bring the left knee up. Cross over. Hold. Four. Three. Two. One. Coming out. Inhale. Bring that left knee in front. I straighten my right knee a little bit at this point. And then exhale. Left toe, left heel. Weight on both sides. Good. Opposite side. Take a breath in. Exhale. Sit. Bend even a little bit more. Now, it may cause your back to arch. So you kind of got to play with that balance for your own self. Okay? Good. From here. As you inhale, shift the weight left. Bring the right knee up, cross over, and just see where you are. And you may notice that one hip is a little easier to cross over than the other. Like for me, it's whew, a really, really big difference. So we're all different. Just play with this. Four, three, two, one, to come out, inhale, let's bring that right knee back up, straighten the left knee a little bit, and then exhale, toe, heel, release. Perfect. Let's come down to our mat. Um, let's sit down. Let's sit down in Dandasana, stack pose. From staff pose. Let's practice that spinal twist that we did before. Both legs are extended. Look at your left leg. Left knee is up, left toes are up. I feel nice and equal on my butt. If you need to put a cushion or a blanket underneath. Right knee, if you inhale, bend the right knee, but put the right foot next to the left knee. No closer than that. Lengthen the spine. Left arm either hugs this right knee or the left elbow comes on the outside of the right knee, whichever you can do. Sit up straight once you've figured out your left arm. Look at your left leg. Still has integrity? Good. Right arm, inhale it up. Drop the shoulders, lengthen the spine. Take a breath in, exhale, find the twist. On this twist, we are using the strength of that left arm to try and bring our chest and our belly into the twist. So it's on the other side of this bent knee. From here, exhale, bring the right arm down behind by your hip. Could be four inches, six inches behind. We're all a little bit different that way. The object here is to lengthen the spine. Try and get the chest to shine outward to the right and the belly. Go ahead, look through the right corner of the right eye. Bring that right shoulder behind you. Hold four, three, two, and one. To come out, right hand, inhale it up behind you. Now as you exhale, Come back to center, release the hands, release the leg. Opposite side. Look at your right leg first. Even in this position, I think about lifting the arch. 
lift the arch that gets my ankle and my knee and my hip all in nice position. Left leg, inhale, bend the knee, place the left foot next to the right knee. Sit up straight. Right arm hugs or elbow on the outside, or even if you can't do that, just take your hand and hang on to your left knee. Left arm, inhale it up, lengthen. Exhale, find the twist, lengthen. Exhale, bring the left arm behind you. Use the strength of that right arm to find the twist, but the twist with the long spine, shoulders back, Best of your ability, try and keep your head in line on, with your spine, even as you're looking to the left. Hold. Four. Three. Two. And one, to come out, inhale the left arm up behind you. Exhale, release, come back to Dandasana. Let's do a little boat pose. The boat pose is really cool because again, it's another reminder of that feeling of keeping our spine straight, which we wanted to do in the twist we just did, which we wanna do when we're doing certain standing poses. So, into Dasana, bend both knees, plant the feet, on the mat, take your hands, hold your knees, straighten the back. As you exhale, simply drop back so you can straighten your elbows. That's it. From here, we lift the feet off the mat. You can bring your hands again on top of the knees or behind by the thighs, whichever is good. Shine the heart. Keep your knees bent. If you'd like, release your hands. Let them hang out by your knees on the outside. Okay, 10 counts, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, Four, three, two, and one. To come out, right back into Dandasana. Take a breath. Exhale, release Dandasana. Arms up, lengthen the spine. Exhale, release. Let's come into a seated pose with our legs crossed. And then exhale, forward fold any way you want. Just come down, stretch to the spine. So in the boat pose, it's quite interesting. Sometimes we find that we're feeling the discomfort or the challenge in our abs. It can be usually underneath the ribs, and you feel it all the way down to your hip flexors. Now, the hip flexors, it's a group, but there's um, a muscle and tendon or ligament that passes right in front of your, your hip, the hip crease. And that may be where you feel some discomfort. So you, you're fine in the back, you're fine in the core, the abdominals, but your hip flexors may be a little uh, weak. So that's fine. You're gonna feel the boat pose in different places and it's just um, a wonderful opportunity to learn more about your body and where there's strengths and weaknesses and where you can bring attention. So don't worry about it. All right, let's come out, just lift the head, sit up nice and straight. And once more, let's extend the legs. Sit up nice and straight. Close your eyes. See if you can sit in Dandasana without the support of your hands. Soft breath. We're going to stay here for eight. Nine. 
seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Yay, that felt good. Okay, if you have a block or a cushion, this is a nice restorative pose. I'm going to put my cushion by my shoulder blades. So you need to kind of move around a little bit and figure out. So you're laying down. As I come down, I put it somewhere where it's comfortable underneath my shoulder blades so I can still release my head down to the mat. So now the chin is up and you're really extending to the front of the neck. Arms are extended out to the side, palms up. So I'm opening up the shoulder, opening up the front line of the body. Now, if this is uncomfortable for your neck, not a problem. Take a towel and put it where your head would naturally just fall down so there's not such an extreme angle in the neck. All right, as we get older, the vertebrae in our neck um, get a little compressed. So sometimes it's nice to have another cushion. All right, so I'll meet you in this position. Again, just play with it so it feels good. Oh, yeah, actually, this feels better for me, too. If you can, shoulders are open, palm up. This palm up position really opens up the shoulder girdle and relaxes the top of the shoulder and neck. So if you can do it, that would be best. If it causes a lot of discomfort, just close the palm. In this position, let's quiet the breath. and find our focus on the sounds from the right ear. So do not hold your breath this time, simply breathe normally, but bring your focus to the sound. So not words in your head, not music in your head, just follow the sound. Go ahead, we'll stay here for three minutes. At any time it's uncomfortable, go ahead and come out.
Okay, to safely come out of this pose, take your hands, bring it underneath your head. Use the strength of your hands to bring the chin towards the chest first. And now, as you exhale again, just sit up. So it's important that we use a little help to lift our neck, okay, when we come out of the pose. Now, just real quickly, for some of us in that pose, we might have felt tension in the neck or in the shoulder, because I know some of us have had uh, previous injuries and such. So if you're feeling that discomfort, the general rule is to see if you really concentrate on your breath for maybe five breaths or 10 breaths, if you can do it calmly, and see if that discomfort dissipates. If it does not dissipate, please change your position. To, uh, lessen the intensity, or perhaps from a palm open, you close it, or perhaps from an extended arm, you bring it closer, or you put another cushion underneath your head, or you lessen uh, the, the thickness of your block. Because remember, especially when we have injuries, the only way to heal and strengthen is to first relax. If we keep introducing more and more and more tension, those muscle fibers are simply going to get shorter, shorter, shorter. They're going to keep contracting because that's just the, the normal response of the body. So if after five to 10 breaths, it doesn't dissipate, then let's please change the posture. Okay, come back onto your back without any props this time. And let's practice Kaya Kriya, perhaps for two or three breaths, and then come into your Savasana. So go ahead. Kaya Kriya really physically relaxes the body, but also has wonderful, subtle, energetic properties. So go ahead.
If you can stay in your savasana a little bit longer, please enjoy it and have a great day. If we're ready to come out, again, let's observe our breath. There's no judgments here. We're simply observing where the breath is. It's all good. And then let's bring movement to our toes and ankles. Fingers, hands and wrists. Knees and elbows. Hips and spine. Gently letting the head tilt from side to side. With that same soft breath, let's all meet on one side. And then on your next exhale, go ahead. Let's push up. Find a nice, stable, comfortable seated posture. You just go through the steps that you do in terms of relaxing the ankles, knees, hips, lengthening the spine. Dropping the shoulders. Feel how comfortable it is now to hold that head in a nice uh, neutral position rather than having the chin up or too far down or the head forward. We're really learning this alignment now. And as we fall into that physical alignment, something changes in our central nervous system. And it's, it's just this automatic feedback where every time now when we come to our seated position, we go, ah, oh, dang, that feels really good. I feel nice and relaxed. And let's close the session. Inhale, bring hands to heart center, sharing the pranava together one time. Take a breath in. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Exhale, bowing down to the teacher within. And inhale, coming back up. Eyes open, full awareness. Namaste. Thanks, guys.